so that uh, we will be on time. Start the recording and we will start. Yeah, I, I did that already. Okay. A very good morning to all our participants, especially to our respected resource person, Dr. Nagaratna Biradar, Madam. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker for today's session. Uh, Dr. Biradar is a renowned expert in the field of agricultural extension. Uh, she has a uh, lot of focus on collaborative extension and building farmer networks. Her extensive research and practical work have significantly contributed to advancing water production in uh, plantation and mango orchards in peninsular India through innovative networking and extension strategies. Uh, her dedication to building robust farmer networks has empowered countless farmers to adopt sustainable uh, agroforestry techniques, enhancing their productivity and resilience. Today's talk uh, that's titled Agroforestry Building Farmer Networks, Collaborative Extension for Agroforestry Success is very important because you know the government of India's emphasis on having FPOs, farmer producer organizations, having farmer cooperatives. So that's uh, very important. She will be delving uh, into the critical role of farmer networks in promoting agroforestry practices. Uh, Dr. Brother will share invaluable insights and practical experiences on how collaborative extension approach can drive success in uh, agroforestry interventions. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Nagaratna Biradar, ma'am. Ma'am, your slides are visible. You are also audible. The floor is all yours. Uh, you may start, ma'am, your presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Suhail, uh, for, uh, for a very nice introduction, though I may not deserve. Uh, but um, good morning to all the participants as well as the organizers of the today's uh, talk. talk on how to build a farmer network and how to go ahead with a collaborative extension. The topic basically just looks like a management, uh, management domain. But as I am a researcher, I am basically a technocrat. So what I have done is I have shared my experience of social science research, which I have carried out as a scientist working with Indian Grassland and Fodder Research Institute. So in this particular topic, we see uh, two very key, two important terminologies. First one is the collaborate, collaborative, and second one is the agroforestry. So agroforestry, I'm sure, a lot of the um, previous um, speakers might have covered, about, covered in depth about the concepts of the agroforestry or its role in maintaining the ecological balance or its benefits, its uh, policies or many other aspects. So I would be mainly focusing on collaboration per se and uh, why one should build the farmers networks as to, to, to mainly uh, like um, to enhance uh, to enhance the efficiency of our working. So with the coming to the uh, collaboration, these particular points uh, I, I have just conceptualized based on my experience. What we do when we are in the National Agricultural Research System is like, the, uh, like what is the requirement of former and extension scientist ratio it is very less in even in uh, in our country. So most of the institutes have got only few extension scientists or only few extension workers because agriculture being the state subject, the extension part basically lies with the state agricultural departments. However, though we are in the national agricultural system, we are expected to do a part of uh, um, extension activities we are expected to uh, take 
few of the technologies to the farmer's field. And it becomes very challenging when if we start working in isolation or only with the two or three persons. So if we enter into the collaboration, then we can enhance the visibility of our work as well as we can reduce the time required for the transfer of the technologies. So extension in isolation consumes more time and it brings in less visibility. So we need to enter into the collaboration. The second thing is when it comes to the agroforestry, then the very nature of it is that it's, it, it, it is it not so many dimensions maybe like it has got the ecological dimension definitely but it also has got social as well as economic interactions attached with it so we cannot take a single piece of land of the farmer as as a as, a, as a, our unit of transfer of the technologies and we cannot do that for example if when it comes to the ecology, we start with the land. And if we want to level the land of only one farmer and the farmer and his neighboring farmers have got the undulating land, even the land leveled in the one farmer's field will not bring in any result. So it should have a holistic approach. So then the nature of the uh, technology or agroforestry technology, it certainly demands the collaboration. Otherwise, it cannot be actually, um, uh, it's, it's uh, actual influences cannot be seen at the, at, at the uh, ecological level. And uh, uh, the, the purpose of agroforestry is to ensure that uh, to bring in sustainability in our farm operations. But if we are taking only individual farm, then the, the we need to, what happens is the long long term sustainability will get hampered. Only when we integrate, we, when only when we co collaborate, only when we build the network of the farmers and then introduce the agroforestry technologies, then we can bring in the sustainability. So even in the sustainability point of view, collaboration becomes very, very important. But when we are talking about such technologies, what happens is uh, there are certain um, uh, certain uh, uh, positive aspect, uh, aspects which we can uh, uh, realize out of the collaboration. The first one is it increases the social interactions. We tend to interact with the people of varied background. The background may be in terms of their uh, demography or maybe in terms of their experiences maybe in terms of their knowledge. So the outcome of the collaboration could be that it increases social interactions and also enriches learning by mutual support. And once we collaborate, then the willingness of the people to contribute starts opening up. Like people, they start feeling that now we belong for this particular cause and then they willingly they start uh, contributing for that particular cause. But if if we are not collaborating with the farmers and if we're do, doing it only with the one farmer, then the willingness of the neighboring farmer may not be there. So it supports the harmonization of the multiple objectives. For example, my objective as a scientist is to ensure that this particular technology reaches to the farmers, but the farmer has got a different objective that his farm gets the benefit out of it. But both of our objectives can be harmonized by uh, collaborations. And definitely it increases the efficiency in terms of its reduction of the cost, as well as it enhances the sharing of resources. So the collaboration has got many, many benefits. But having said that, the collaboration is also has got a challenge. I'm not dwelling deep into what are the challenges involved, but one thing is there, when we are collaborating, then there are certain underlying con conditions which have, to, which have to be considered as only, then only the collaboration becomes successful. For example, if I am working on agricultural field, 
and if i want to go and collaborate with a human right uh, with an organization which is working on human rights then probably that collaboration doesn't work because there are no common underlying conditions so the certain conditions have to be met even for example though i am working in the agricultural field but my emphasis is more on the is more on livestock development then i should look for the uh, the collaboration with such farmers or with such organizations where their basic interest is on livestock development that is very important like um, the, the, then only the uh, collaboration can become successful but why why we do we need to build that farmer network why it is required most of you might have just started the career 5 years before or a few years before and as you as you tread this path with the, the path of the profession you come across many many farmers you you may touch the the the, the you may uh, come and interact with some of the farmers or as a part of your research work you may consider them as your respondents what most of the time happens is we collect the data we what uh, we collect the data then we have this our uh, respondents list and once the data is analyzed and paper is published we tend to ignore the uh, the the uh, data set we tend to ignore the list of the farmers from whom we have collected the data but what i would suggest is from the day one whomever farmer you have interviewed whomever farmer uh, from whom you have collected the data keep those data set year wise that will definitely help you to over the years once because as you progress in your profession you may get a different kind of ideas and for that particular idea to address you may need to have a database of the farmers so as an extension uh, scientist you need to build your own farmer database and for that you need to have a farmer network this is about the building of the farmer network how to maintain the farmer network that is different i'll come to that point at, uh, i'll come to that point later and if you are a researcher for example if you are a researcher what happens is once you have collected the data most of the time when we go to the field and start collecting the data some of the um, farmers responses will be in like uh, i will just give one example which will uh, make it more clear the farmers will tell that one acre of sorghum or one acre of jowar gives me two tractor loads of stover he says i'll get two tractor loads of stover and similarly what he says is one acre of cowpea gets me half a tractor load of cowpea hay he says all these things but as a scientist we need to convert them into the units but we might have failed to ask him we, during the field work like what exactly two loads means like how much it would weigh so is like once we come back and we start looking at our uh, the responses of the respondents we may have get some of the queries queries not necessarily related to the conversion units or maybe it may be queries related to many other things which we might have failed to anticipate during the field work so to understand all these things we may need to have the farmers uh, database what happens is you need you need not or you necessarily need not to contact the farmer who has told you to load of uh, for uh, to load of sorghum store because he may not be able to tell you like approximately how much it weighs but once you have a network of the uh, once you have the list of the farmers and if you know that this particular farmer is capable enough to answer my queries you can as well go back to him call him and get the answers so this is possible and this will help you to make your uh, data 
uh, to make your data as much as possible uh, more quantify quantifiable and if you are a researcher from uh, non social science or from the basic science probably if you have a farmers uh, network it will help you to understand the, what are the grassroots perspectives in the field in which you are working if you are working in the crop like groundnut then this particular uh, the farmer network may help you to understand the grass perspective once in a while even if you just have a talk with him or if you just have a discussion with him and uh, and uh, allow, like have his views about the particular crop like groundnut crop how it performed what are the um, uh, percent diseases he encountered how the weather influenced his uh, his uh, crop performance that will all will help you to get the under the perspectives of the farmers based on which you can further build your research however if you are a teacher in the state agricultural in a, in our cities having an interaction with the farmers will definitely give an added edge as compared to the other teachers because you can always relate your teaching concepts with the farmers experiences the moment you start giving the field experiences definitely definitely the the students will view teaching as more interesting and they will become more uh, active in learning but how to build the farmer network when you are in the national agricultural research system should i every day go to the villages uh, keep interacting with the farmers and get the get their contacts develop the rapport is it possible probably the uh, time frame in which we work may not have may not give us this luxury of visiting the farmers every day so one of the way is to we can go with the development organizations the organizations which are directly involved in the with the farmers and second one is through the direct contacts direct contacts though it is best if you are working in a particular project and if it allows you to have the direct contacts that's one of the best ways otherwise the the another way is to work with the development organizations we have the n number of the very good development organizations and from particularly of late lot of organizations uh, of foundations are coming like a reliance foundation for example who are directly involved with the farmers and all we need to, to do is identify such organizations which uh, have a same underlying conditions develop a good rapport with them and then through them we can develop a farmers network so the, from the next side what i will do is how i will just share my a few of my research um, experiences which have got the direct relationship with the ag agroforestry per se i'll just give the one of the examples of our work with the kangayam grasslands of tamil nadu so this was taken up by a team of uh, uh, scientists from igfri but we faced a few challenges here the first challenge was the language and the second one was we had never gone into the villages of uh, villages of tamil nadu though we did a lot of uh, background work before actually starting with the field work we were knowing no, we, we were uh, had, we had a fair idea about where all these kanga and grasslands have been distributed with the tamil nadu but still we wanted that the nature of the work demanded us to collaborate so what we they did is we collaborated with 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 the one uh, development organization there that was seva and another development another uh, organization is tamil nadu agricultural university so with these two organizations we were able to work for three long years in this particular uh, kangayam grasslands and we, we were able to uncover some of the very interesting facts about the agroforestry the first uh, interesting facts about this was this is the grassland which is privately owned yeah like unlike many other grasslands which are common grasslands and the second thing is that uh, all the grasslands have got the the live hedge in this photo you can see the particular live uh, live hedge which is very drought tolerant and also they rear the mature sheep 
so and this uh, trees uh, trees of uh, acacia are uh, always interspersed in the in the, in the privately owned grasslands in this particular picture you can just see like how the all the grasslands are interspersed with the tree as well as the live hedge and this uh, also gave us some of the very interesting uh, uh, aspects from the point of view of uh, social science the first thing we observed is over 200 years the the the, uh, the region has never witnessed any land fragmentation which is not so with remaining parts of the country we keep on uh, observing that the lands are getting fragmented into a very small and small units but in this particular area no land fragmentation and the second one is like uh, the farmers are keeping a very small family size and so for that we analyze the data of three generations and in all the three generations we could uh, notice that the maximum uh, children each family possessed is only two not more than two so that they consciously keep, kept the very small family size and when we asked the reason they told that the grasslands uh, can sustain only the the family size of three to four members so we don't want to fragment the lines that was very clear and the the family size was kept small irrespective of the gender of the child and that has brought many many uh, benefits to them so this is very this example is very worth emulating as well as worth replicating but the thing here is to get this, some of the very sensible informations about land, uh, land fragmentation or like a family size and all, we could get this information only because we developed a collaboration with the, with the local development organizations. And the second thing is, this work was done in the year 2000, but even now, 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 even now, now also uh, on different uh, with a different objective. So we have we are working in this, but I still have the the list of the farmers who we contacted around twenty years before. So now I'm more confident that I can go and I can collect the uh, data which can address the objectives framed for the present study. This is one more thing, like most of the time we feel that you no, know, the, whatever the farmers say is, is it is not like scientific. It is not uh, scientific. So we did one study where what are the farmers are practices, practicing, whether the, uh, whether the scientists consider them as scientific or not. Then we found that nearly 64% of the practices followed by the farmers in, in the area of livestock feeding they are considered as scientific by the scientists themselves. So this is one of the important things because farmers also every day they'll be observing their animal health. They, they will be critically analyzing why the my animal yield is reducing or why my animal's health is affecting. What am I feeding to the animals? Am I feeding the good quality fodder or not? And they know that if I feed this, the milk yield will increase. If I feed this, the animal health will increase. So they are able to give the good reasons for that. That means they are not expressive. But once we go and sit with them, they will be able to. They they have the uh, knowledge. They have the understanding of why of a particular practices. So the, the once we know that the, the farmers have got good knowledge, then yeah, yeah, as a scientist, whether you are a social scientist or a basic scientist, it, it becomes um, all the more important to learn from them. Then one more is, though it is not directly related with agroforestry, but the thing is the, the crop, the seed, of the crop which is produced in this particular region is basically used for the agroforestry purpose. The, 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 there is one part in southern India that is the Anandpur district which is in Andhra Pradesh. This In this particular area nearly 40 villages the, the farmers take up seed production of Stylosanthus hemata crop. They don't grow any other crop. 
only when the rainfall is very good, then they go for the groundnut. But otherwise, they don't take up any other crop. So how did we uh, do this particular study is we basically collaborated with the Animal Husbandry and Veterinary Services Department of Andhra Pradesh. We did it. And like um, it, it is a, it's a very long term study. Uh, like um, uh, what we did is as a baseline data we, uh, we collected in the year 19, uh, uh, in the year 1999 and completed it in the 2002. And then just after 10 years, again, we did the 2012 uh, uh, study. And very recently, even in the 2022, we have done that uh, study. So the how we were able to do this study is only because when we went in the 1999, we, the, or the, we, have, we collected the database of the farmers. And using this particular database, we reached out to the same farmers in the year 2012, the same farmers in the year 2022. So based on that, the, but our main focus is uh, whether even after a gap of 10 years, farmers are still willing to continue with the same crop. If they are willing to continue, how this crop is actually um, benefiting them. So the, basically it is a cost benefit analysis and we noticed that even after 10 years, the price of the seed remains same, like a buying price, because the seed is bought by the middleman. We don't have any formal network, formal organization, or mandi, or market, where the farmers bring their produce and the, the, the formal organization purchases. That facility is not there. It's only the middleman. So even over the 10 years, the price of the seed did not change so that gave us clear indication that the farmers the middlemen are trying to exploit the farmers but however the labor cost has increased almost three folds like from 66000 to 15000 so these two factors have reduced the input output ratio though the gross return the gross return is more but it has reduced in spite of the lesser benefit cost ratio, still the farmers feel that this is the crop they would like to con continue for the reason that they, they, this is the crop continue to suit the drought-like situation of the Ananpur region. One more thing is like uh, there was a, a project where, uh, um, where uh, the, uh, uh, we had to promote the agroforestry model or basically it is called as a wadi model uh, to the very small and marginal farmers. Means one acre or two acres or less than actually small farmer is one hectare. The marginal farmer is less than one hectare and small farmer is less than two hectares, means one acre to five acres. Only those farmers we had to address. So for this, what we did is we collaborated with the one organization in Harvard or in our place, which is which is which is which is involved basically in the promotion of livestock related activities. So here I'll share some of the one a few cases. And in this particular case, and uh, you can just see that when the project started, is a, he, he had got only three trees in his farm. Only three multipurpose tree, trees. And afterwards, it increased to 1,600, basically a boundary plantation. The, he had no horticulture plants and it increased to 96 because like mangoes support us as well as gava and then these trees were given to them and the interesting point is the number of animals increased see buffalo doubled bullock too then the cows and goats the number increased from initial five to here you can observe nearly 16 animals so that increased the reason being the crop residue initially he was feeding 
and now in between these horticulture plants he has introduced the three grasses and one legumes so that has gave him more forages but the most important thing is besides having lot of economic benefits from this what he says is he is now not scared of the drought anymore this was in the year 1997 the work was done and then subsequently in 2012 we did the we collected the data similarly another case with the farmer is that the, the this particular farmer was a farm labor like though he had a less than 0.5 hectare land maybe one acre or 1.25 acres whatever you say so he had a very less farm but because that was not a, uh, helping him to sustain his family he was going out and uh, going out and he was working as a labor and you can see how his form was looking initially and then slowly he introduced the horticulture plants and as well as in between uh, whatever the, the grass you are say, seeing here is it is the brecaria decumbens crop signal grass we call so this was introduced in his field and also he has got a good crop of stylosanthus hemata and he took up all the soil and water conservation measures like whatever is required like if he had a trench combined all along his field I, and then uh, he introduced the animal and his, um, his uh, purpose was like he wanted to trade the cattle. He would bring the very weak animals from the, uh, from the livestock market or a shandy and then he would feed these animals with the grasses, graze them in between the feed and for five months or six months, once the animal starts looking healthy, he will sell it for the higher price that was his that was the um uh, 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 that was the livelihood option he selected by himself and he made a good amount of money to sustain his family then he started producing the warmy compost and eventually what he did is he started collecting all the warmy compost produced by the neighboring farmers of his village and he started trading the warmy compost also so slowly he was not working as a farm labor and from farm labor he has moved as an employer because to sell the warmy compost he is now having two to three boys with him another is uh, an, another is uh, uh, example i would like to share uh, that is also from the collaboration itself is that uh, Mm, yeah, the horticultural activities. Uh, uh, no, before that, uh, another one is like uh, uh, livestock uh, matters more. Probably it is not related directly, but I just wanted to show you how the one of our study, which was done on effect of uh, drought on livestock income, both during normal and the drought years. So we conducted this study in the year. 2002-3 because 2002-2003-2004 the, the this part of the country witnessed the continuous drought severe drought so we wanted to know how this drought has influenced but we know, we noticed that the income from the crop reduced drastically almost three times it reduced but the livestock income very marginally reduced that means uh, uh, that means uh, the 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 livestock is one of the very critical component to address the drought related consequences so this is a, a one of the uh, very recent study um, uh, okay man. Yeah, this, this is not very recent. Oh, it was done some 10 years before, but here we analyzed like the complete Karnataka, like uh, which are the districts having a high fodder availability, which are the districts have got very poor fodder availability, and this I'll skip. And this is uh, one more uh, story which shows you the how the public-private partnership has happened in, or uh, in, uh, happened for the uh, selling of the sorghum store and here you can see that how the sorghum store is traded in our uh, in our place uh, in Karnataka and uh, this is this was possible only due to the network of farmers processors 
government as well as the buyers why i am telling here is the why i am telling here government is that this particular trade is not recognized as a trade by the uh, by the uh, by the co commerce um, it has got a one body um, which deals with giving the trade licenses so it is not uh, actually recognized as a trade but these uh, processors wanted to have a continuous electricity to chop the sorghum stover so then what happened is the electricity board of karnataka um, the and the and the uh, uh, processes through igfra registration intervention they were brought together in the common platform and then they entered with an agreement because it is an agriculture related activities the whatever the um, electricity is used for the uh, chuffing of the fodder will not be uh, will, uh, will not first thing is will not be charged at the rate of uh, commercial units and second thing is they will be given the 24 hour supply of electricity so the uh, the public unit also came in, into this value chain and now they started trading and it has grown into a huge business where the uh, sorghum stover which particular sorghum store they are very particular they want m-35-1 sorghum variety sorghum store because it has got a very good uh, dry matter content and this is relished by the animals so now they started trading they are trading to the different parts of uh, state like it is going to maharashtra it is going to even western part of the country like gujarat this is the one of the most recent work that is introduction of fodder in the in the in the uh, mango orchards or we can just uh, uh, consider it as a horticultural activities and here uh, what how we have started is we wanted to identify the farmers who are really interested in cultivation of the fodder in between the tree roses so for this so oh, we did a series of uh, training programs for the farmers and uh, we uh, we exposed them to the different fodder crops available with us which can be grown by in their farm then the farmers after listening about various fodder crops available in our farm they were allowed to choose which fodder crops they would like to grow in their own field we never uh, insisted uh, insisted them that you have to grow this particular crop but the, the selection option was given to the farmers and then they were convinced like why we should use that indoor spaces so the first thing is here you can see that if the indoor spaces is not uh, um, uh, utilized for the cultivation then it it leads to a lot of weeds in the particular photograph wherever you are seeing the white patches they all are like the parthenium and if uh, they cultivate the fodder crops absolutely they don't have any of the weeds so this was the main highlight for them and as a result we could reach out to the farmers in in many districts of karnataka the dharwad districts the Damanigere, Tumukuru, Kolaru, Chitra, Kolaru, Chikabalapura, they all are uh, located in different parts of the Karnataka. But what happened is the most important thing is the farmers told that they never knew about so many photo crops are available. So the knowledge on photo crops of the farmers in, improved. And then because they got connected with the IJFRA, the, the access to the information, they just call us this is the, uh, the one of our farmer wants to do it how he can go about it how much is the cost involved in purchase of the seeds so everything they get the access to the information seed and propagation material and also the cultivation of the fodder resulted in better livestock income better livestock yield so the even the fa the family members started having more milk and it, it helped to improve the family nourishment this was the work we did it but uh, but uh, but the underlying assumption was that 
uh, was that the it, from one former it should reach to the many former so the the former to former spread should happen the why we were more focusing on that is that none of the develop uh, government organizations like the department of uh, agriculture or horticulture or animal husbandry are in particular interested in diffusion of the forest technologies so we wanted to know how the inter uh, how the uh, farmer uh, spread is happening so we assessed like within the farmer like initially farmer might have covered only the uh, 0.25 acres of the land whether by the end of second year he spreads it that was the intra farmer spread we looked at as well as inter farmer spread from one farmer to another farmer so when we looked at it what we uh, what we noticed is um, you can just see it resulted in intra farmer spread this was at the end of the second year it was intra farmer spread that 16% it increased and when it comes to the inter inter farmer spread also the number of farmers new farmers planted fodder crops by taking planting meter is from one farmer under 0.8 now it might be many fold but it was at the end of the uh, second year so the, there was a good um, uh, spread but in terms of planting material many farmers were reluctant to share the planting material but in terms of uh, knowledge or information uh, sharing like how many farmers discussed how many farmers requested seed and planting material you can see for every one farmer 13 farmers came and discussed and for every one farmers nine farmer requested seed and planting materials so this indicates that the the farmer to farmer spread also happens if the if the if the uh, um, what to say if the technology is not very sophisticated for example the same seed cannot be used or say in such cases it's very difficult but in uh, forage crops it does happen so with the, so what were our observations were that um, yeah, the observation that is very relevant for the today's talk is um, farmers can be considered farmers are definitely our ideal partners in our research work be the social science definitely for the social science they are our partners but even for other sciences also having farmers as ideal partners will help you to enhance the value of your research work so the basic thing is having farmers in our research is now the government of india is telling that if you have if you are the breeder of a particular variety then it is your responsibility to to transfer or to diffuse this particular variety or to reach out this particular variety to the farmers in such cases the it becomes all the more important to build the farmers net network and also once we build the uh, farmers network then within the system the endogenous process starts happening and the technology starts diffusing having said this uh, like um, since beginning of my career i started having the all the farmers database uh, and then uh, when i was in the like um, after completing 20 years or so then i kept uh, reaching out to the farmers like how whether they are still continuing with the for forages in their farm and whether they have discontinued or some of them discontinued in between and again they started cultivating i just wanted to understand what factors actually influence the behavior of the farmers to do so like they first they adopt the technology and then they they discontinue they may discontinue forever or they may again uh, start continuing and some of them will uh, not adopt the technology at all in the initial stage only so with this whatever the database i had i had proposed i did one study like like i took out i pulled out some of the farmers in my database who are continued to cultivate the fodder crops and the set of the farmers who continued who cultivated initially and then discontinued and set of the farmers who continue who continued discontinued and again continued 
and the set of farmers who never took up the technologies. And then I framed a project and um, carried out this work just to understand what are the factors actually that will help farmers to continue with this technology. So somewhere this database, so what I want to emphasize is somewhere this network, somewhere this database will definitely help you to, um, to, uh, to develop a, a very good project as well as uh, whatever work you are doing, it gives a uh, different dimensions or different perspectives and uh, it helps you to make it more uh, client friendly or more ready to use kind of tech, more to build the ready to use kind of the technologies. So with this, uh, probably I was given 45 minutes time and well within my time. So thank you so much for a very patient hearing. I told uh, I'm not a, a management expert. So the management uh, concept I have not brought in. Those are totally a different um, uh, kind of uh, uh, uh concepts but uh, i try to link how the agroforestry experiences and as a loan extension worker in the in, in in the organization where i'm working how i was able to reach out to many farmers it was basically to tap the uh, to tap the very good uh, rapo or qualities of the developmental organizations i because i was not I wasn't able to develop the rapport with the farmers by investing a lot of time, but the development organizations had that. So I developed the rapport with the uh, developmental organizations. I used their platform to reach out to the many people. Here, for example, even in the horticulture technologies, what I did is I actually uh, uh, tied up with the Technosur, it is an international organization, uh, developmental organizations organization working in Damanagere and very professional and it is being run by the Irma graduates. So I I collaborated with that. And second one is in, in the Tumukur area, I collaborated with the Akshay Kalpa uh, Food Science Private Limited, which is into a organic milk production. It is a, a private business firm. I collaborated with them. And in uh, in Chikabalapura area, I collab collaborated with our own Krishi Vidyana Kendras. So the this collaboration definitely I enter into their domain through our network and uh, not just develop, and it was also the maintaining. I still remember the first farmer with whom. I had interaction and who whom, uh, who has actually in, uh, took up the forest technologies. So keeping or maintaining the farmers network also is very important. So thank you so much for the patience here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for your very nice talk on uh, extension and building farmer networks. Uh, the presentation is open for discussion or any questions or clarifications if participants are having, please interact with our